Well, it was in 2012 that the former Gillard Labor government released the white paper called Australia and the Asian Century in 2012, although this was also short just three years after a new defence paper had been released by the Rudd Labor government, which pointed China as being a danger for Australia. So this white paper of the Gillard government identified the rise of Asia as the defining feature of the 21st century and one which Australian capitalism was well positioned to benefit from. The industrialisation of uh, China and India and other Asian countries is seen as a great opportunity, especially for the mining billionaires in Australia, like Gina Reinhart and Clive Palmer, to get even richer, um, selling iron, coal, gas, petroleum, and also uranium, uh, as well as other minerals, to China and India in particular. Um, there's the associated rich man's white dreaming of Australia to become a gas Qatar, a bit like um, how Qatar is uh, placed in, in the world as an oil, rich, oil and gas rich country, um, at the huge expense of the environment. But the capitalists here are also salivating at the thought of huge profits to be made from selling services such as privatised education and luxury products um, to the rising middle classes of these countries. And, you know, if you think about the um, reforms um, of education, or so-called reforms, reform used to mean something good or better, not something worse, but, you know, since the early 80s it's meant something um, that's against the interests of working class people. But the new um, formulas of deregulated fees and government funding of private as well as public universities and so forth, um, this is really um, is connected to um, the attempt to further commodify education um, uh, with a view to selling education to people in different Asian countries. Um, and also it's more, now more at the secondary school level as well as at the university level. But what about ordinary people's interest in all of this? Well, ordinary people's interest doesn't get a look in. We're just told that this is um, good for all of us. And uh, there is a real contradiction um, between Australian capitalists' embrace of the profit openings that they see and their attitude towards ordinary people. I mean, the attitude towards ordinary people is um, terrible immigration restrictions. Uh, it's, you know, Australia's immigration policy isn't just um, inhumane in terms of its treatment of refugees, but there are all sorts of situations that happen in terms of migration restrictions where families are split up because maybe, a, you know, um, just thinking of some examples of you know, maybe a Filipino mother, child born in Australia, mothers deported back to the Philippines, uh, families split up, all sorts of immigration restrictions on um, people from Asian, ordinary people from Asian countries. There's the whole brain drain where the Australian capitalists first, you know, have never wanted to train uh, the next generation of the working class and hence um, the further and further privatisation of um, edu education and so forth. But now they're not just relying on students and apprentices to pay their own way, they're now relying on governments of other countries to train workers. Um, and then, of course, their treatment of refugees and the hypocritical aid projects which often benefit Australian corporations more than anyone in um, the, co the country they're supposed to be benefiting. You know, and I think the treatment of people in Asia is epitomised most horribly in Australia's reactionary um, refugee policy. You know, where Australia is exploiting very poor countries in the region, um, Nauru, tiny country which was robbed, robbed blind by the British, um, which has no real means of raising income other than now from uh, housing detention centres for refugees. Papua New Guinea, 
Cambodia. They tried it with East Timor, but that fell over um, for offshore processing of refugees, never to be allowed to enter Australia. That's the plan of both um, Liberal and Labor governments. And you know, this was sold, and some, you know, smaller Liberals did buy it at the time. It was sold as a policy to save refugees' lives, save the lives of asylum seekers so they didn't drown at sea. Well, those refugees are still dying. It's just that Australia wants them to die somewhere else, not on our borders. And it's even more insidious when you look at the relationship of Australia with Sri Lanka, which I think is probably even more insidious than the relationship with any of the countries from which refugees are fleeing. Because Australia has never ever condemned the Sri Lankan government for its genocidal war on refugees. And Australia is still has um, the most close of relationships with the Sri Lankan government, the government that people are fleeing from. Australia's allowed Sri Lankan security uh, officials to interview refugees in detention centres in Darwin. Um, Australian government intercepts, or Australian immigration officials give preliminary interviews to um, Tamil and Sinhalese refugees. Um, to determine whether they might be um, applying for asylum or, so, or not, um, to, to screen people out of the asylum process. So Australia's already deported thousands of Tamil asylum seekers back to Sri Lanka without ever getting a chance to even apply for asylum and have their cases determined in the first place, many of whom end up in Ngombo prison in Colombo. So it's, um, this is an absolutely tragic story. I mean, it's tragic for all of the refugees, but the worst aspect is for refugees from Sri Lanka where there's this close relationship um, and a Sri Lanka welcomes back deported refugees um, into its prisons. Um, whereas at the moment, that's not the situation facing Iranian and, and other refugees. And just last week, we had the second second case of a Tamil man um, in Australia, someone who um, a number of our Geelong comrades would be very close to, um, a group of um, Tamil asylum seekers, uh, and this particular Tamil man, I think it might have been on his birthday, self-immolated last week, um, the second Tamil man in just a few weeks to self-immolate. Um, this is a huge tragedy. Um, but, I mean, the other aspect of what Australian capitalism is doing um, has an interest in is driving down wages in Australia and in Asia, both wages and working conditions, both through the free trade agreements, but also through the various um, policies uh, it's implementing in Australia as well. And, you know, these... Um, you know, these uh, low-wage schemes uh, are designed, um, you know, they're designed to try and create an even bigger reserve army of labour, um, which, you know, people have talked about it for a long time, it's not a new phenomenon, um, but a global, a global reserve army of labour, not just a domestic um, reserve army of labour to drive downward pressure on wage levels in, in uh, many countries. We've got the worldwide um, capitalist policy of casualisation and contractualisation that's spread throughout the world well and truly now and is restructuring the working class. Um, we've also got the situation now in Australia where our migration program has been converted from a permanent migration program to temporary migration program, guest workers, like, um, like has existed in Europe for many years where you have migrant workers who have no rights, no rights to join a union, no rights to, um, you know, no actual rights. Um, and, you know, I think some of the worst of these schemes have been wiped out, but, you know, there are still um, many cases of migrant, temporary migrant workers who, in 457 visas who are really in a bonded situation. Um, and there are still many cases where employers are only, will only employ um, 
temporary workers, they won't employ local workers, which provides a big challenge um, to unions. Uh, and obviously the ruling class um, uh, wants to create a, race, a situation of racism um, in the working class through the use of temporary workers. And then there's the offshoring of jobs which is happening throughout the region. It's not only um, jobs being offshored from Australia to other countries, but um, between different countries in between different countries in Asia. And this is having um, this is destroying economies in the region. Um, uh, you know, certainly destroying certain sectors of industry, certain sectors of skills. Um, you know, through the closing down of manufacturing in, in particular countries, uh, and that's being experienced in Australia and other countries. And I believe in the Philippines, this has resulted, you know, a lot, uh, um, a lot of the jobs which have been offshored have been the jobs from the unionised factories. So this is having, um, you know, a really, uh, the impact on working class consciousness in Australia, especially given Australia's racist white Australia past is really problematic and a number of unions, including even left unions that would pride themselves as being anti-racist, have been confused about how to deal with situations when um, capitalism is replacing um, local workers with um, temporary mig migrant workers and won't allow local workers to even apply for those jobs. Um, but and, and there have certainly been cases of racism um, in unions um, dealing, dealing with this. And what, we, what we've been arguing for is that unions need to actually take up the cause of the 457 visa workers. I'll say a little bit more about that later. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, so our position is that, um, you know, four, five, the union should be... Um, taking up the cause of 457 visa workers by um, arguing for their right to permanency and fighting for their right to permanency, uh, permanent residency, I mean, which is something which some unions have done, um, but it's been a very patchy record. So I might um, wind up now. <laughs> um, obviously, we need to um, take up um, you know, international solidarity is a really key issue, but I um, would like to just um, to, just two comments. I um, really welcome the comments that Sunny has made about climate change um, and the impacts in the region. And Australia, Australia is very culpable in this, with its digging up of coal. Um, to try, you know, seems to be no end in it, and the increased militarisation in the region, where there is this contradiction between Australia's economic links with China and its increased reliance on US militarisation.